Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're gonna to be making this hacker text that might be good for, say, like a fictional user interface. Now when you create this, you don't have to create this uh, kind of this TV uh, look where it's uh, distorted like that. I will show you how to do that, but that was just something fun I threw together just to give a little extra something. But what you'll notice about this is, here, let me kind of go through it slowly it won't move or scroll to the next line until that line is finished do you see how that works so if it's a longer line it takes a, a while for it to kind of move up so it's a very kind of a chunky scroll but it, and it does it all automatically using a trick it's if you're on any of the newer versions of creative cloud there's an expression there called source rect, R-E-C-T as in rectangle, at time. And it, it's able to know the, the height and the width of any layer, basically. So I'm using that to drive the movement, and it works quite well. Now before I do that, I do want to just kind of briefly talk about a couple of things. I have a couple of pieces of gear that I'm looking at and doing some reviews, and I wanted to have you guys maybe go look at their websites and if you have any questions what do you want me to to review about them what do you want to know about them the first one is um, palette gear and this is really cool um, they're customized controllers you can uh, build them up they magnet together they've got little lights in them and then what I have um, that I'm working with is I got two sliders two dials and two buttons and I've just played around with them a little bit and they work well with Adobe stuff so what questions do you have? Um, and I'm going to start to put together a nice little review on how to use this with After Effects and Premiere stuff. So um, they kind of built it more for like Lightroom and Photoshop, but it still can be used with After Effects and Premiere. So what questions do you have about palette gear? And the next one is I've got these really cool headphones. Um, they are the Meze uh, 73 Classics is the ones I'm I'm uh, reviewing, so if you have any questions about them as well, you can go to mezaheadphones.com, and I'll be doing a couple of reviews on both of those pieces of gear. Back to our tutorial here. Now, the first thing you want to do is you need to get some text. So I'm going to create a new composition so we can put everything into the new comp. And let's get some text. What I'm using let's go back to my web browser, is there's this website called hackertyper.net, and basically all you do is just, just type a bunch of gibberish on the keyboard, and it looks like you're hacking into some sort of 1980s terminal. Um, and so what I did is then I just went in and copied it. And now I've got some text. So, hackertyper.net is a good place to get that. Now with this, what I'm going to do is instead of just clicking uh, with the text tool and, and then pasting it, so grab your text tool and just paste it in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take some of this and maybe duplicate it so it's a little bit longer put a few different um, paragraphs in there okay so the first thing we want to do is create it so the text types on and what I did for that is if we come into the animation of the text text animation and then we add a scale now most people when they're doing a type on thing they don't do scale they do um, opacity but it's essential that you use scale for this, otherwise it won't work. Now I do want to point out the font I'm using is called OCRA Standard, and it's just a kind of a computery looking font. I have it green, and it's on a black background. So make sure you, you do scale, and bring the scale down to zero. And then with the range selector, we can see as it goes across, it is typing it on and what you'll notice is that this bounding box is changing the actual bounding box is changing scale 
So if I were to, let's just take that off and just hide it and do what most people do is change the opacity when they're doing a type on. Bring the opacity down. You can see the bounding box doesn't change. It stays the same size. And so that change of the bounding box is what we need in order to create this look. Okay, so let's start that at zero for the start. Let's change the composition settings. Let's go 10 seconds. And then at the end, we'll bring it all the way to 100. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go into the position. Let's go somewhere in the middle. Hit P on the keyboard, brings up the position. And we're going to add to this an expression. So Alt or Option, click on the stopwatch. And for this expression, we need to type this. This dot source, capital R for rect, capital A for T for at, and capital T for time. And then in parentheses, put the word time, then dot height. And we need to set this to a variable. So let's just say um, these are the lines and the line position. So we'll go P line equals and then put a semicolon at the end of that. And then what we'll do next is type value plus and then in square brackets. We want this just to move vertically. So put zero comma P line. And what that is doing is as this bounding box gets bigger, it will move at the same rate. So now as I come in and play this, it's moving, but it's moving the opposite direction. So what I did was I added it, and what I really need to do is subtract it. Okay. All right, looking good. Now you'll notice it's way up here. And because it says value, I can easily just take this and move it to wherever I want. And it'll update it and everything will still work. So then that's the new starting point. Now there's one more thing that I want to add to this is right now, the scale of this layer is set to 100. If I change the scale of this, then it's going to move differently because the source rect at time is based off of scale being 100. So let's fix that by adding in a scalar, just in case we want to you know, change the scale of this. So make sure that your transform is open and you can see the scale, because what we're going to do is we're gonna put a scalar inside of this expression. So scalar equals, and then in parentheses, we're going to now pick whip the scale, we can't pick just scale, we have to pick one of these because um, it's going to be a single value. I can't have a double value array like this. So let's pick the second value and then have that divided by 100. Uh, close off the parentheses and put a semicolon. Now what we do is here in this uh, square bracket, we just take that P line and times that by scalar. So right now, since scale is 100, it's 100 divided by 100, which is 1, and it doesn't do anything. But if I were to scale this up or down, then it would change, but it would still work the way it's supposed to. Okay, so let's um, just quickly add this kind of a, to a TV look. Let's scale that back up again. That's the main thing I wanted to show you was using that source rec at time in order to uh, scroll this with kind of more of a chunky scroll if that's the technical term for it. So let's add a black solid behind it. To the black solid, I'm going to add a grid. So go to generate grid, blending mode to normal. Let's change the corner point to width and height. Change the width to something extremely large. And then move the anchor point over to the right or left. Okay, now we need to change the border and the height. And what you want is you want the height to be twice as big as the border. So if the border is at five, we'll put the height at 10. And how that, what that works is, um, it's gonna be, however thick that is, the, the line, the space is gonna be the same thickness when you do it that way. Now let's bring the opacity down. 
kind of give it a, you know, an old TV kind of a screen look. Maybe down a little bit more. That looks about right. Let's add to this also a new adjustment layer. And to this adjustment layer, let's go into distort and optics compensation. And let's just crank this up a little bit and give it kind of that round over TV look. Let's take a look at this. And that is that. So in a recap, really the only thing you need to do or you need to think about is when you're using the animation, the text animations, make sure to create that type on effect. You're using the scale and not the opacity. That is very important. It doesn't work with opacity. It has to use the scale. And then the second thing is to use the source rect at time um, function and use that to drive the position of the layer. And that's how you create this cool hacking um, scrolling chunky scroll text that could be used for you know like a fictional user interface if you are designing those so thank you so much for watching if you have any questions feel free to put them down in the comments below and also if you have any questions about the two products I'm reviewing the palette gear or the Meze headphones uh, let me know and uh, I can address those when I talk about them so thank you so much and we'll see you next time